take these components using the proper spacer, spacer bolt, and build plate in order to assemble this pump. The build plate comes either with a six inch side which has the smaller surface or the four inch side with the larger surface area. And it's important to make sure that you are using the right side of the plate along with your spacer and build bolt in order to have the right in plate or travel that's inside the pump. So assemble these now. When positioning the build plate, it's important that you have a little area of the plate actually above the surface of the vise edge so that it does not affect the in play or the seating of the inlet on the surface. This is particularly important when you're building a six inch or eight inch product because if it is lower than that, than the surface, it will actually affect the in play area. Using the proper spacer and the proper build bolt, put that through the plate. Take the shaft and screw the shaft onto the spacer. You have to tighten it with an Allen wrench. On the SP17, or the 85S only, you will need to use a spacer and a priming inducer on the low head pumps to ensure that there is proper lift provided to the pump. So this has to slide on first, goes all the way down, and then you put your priming inducer on. And that must be tapped in place. And then you use your specialty tool to drive it the rest of the way home. So it's firmly seated. Then you have to loosen the shaft from the holder, leave the spacer in place, take your inlet, put down, then put your shaft down over the top, put your bolt back in place, make sure you tighten your shaft back up, take the impeller, remove the upthrust washer so as not to damage it when you put it down. Slide the impeller down, and just before seating the impeller, nice squirt of wa uh, soapy water. Two drivers underneath, pull that up. Firmly seating it in place. The inlet shouldn't lift at this point. Take the specialty wrench, that goes over the shaft, tighten down the split comb that. Get it ready for the, the proper torque. Then you take the upthrust washer, take the taper and fit down inside the split cone nut. Up inside on the smooth surface of the chamber. Make sure that the edges of the chamber are clean, that there is no debris on the edges. And then fit the chamber over the shaft. Fit your inlet. Remove the upthrust washer from the assembly. Take the impeller. Bring it down. Before you seat it, a nice squirt of soap. Force this all the way down. Take your screwdrivers in. Underneath the split cone nut. Pull it up. Tighten down the threads, pull it up again, make sure it's seated, you'll notice it's loose. When properly seated, then you can tighten it down with the proper wrench. And then you put a torque wrench in. And to make sure that the impeller doesn't spin, there's a specialty tool that you can put in place. And at that point, please make sure that the impeller doesn't spin after the tool has been removed. At this point, you can take the bottom thrust washer, make sure that you're using the taper and that it's facing downward into the 
that's what kind of that. And you can fit the next chamber, which has the smooth surface on the interior surface, to slide down over the top. Pushing down on the split cone nut and lifting up on the impeller edges. And just before we seat it, we spray soapy water. Then you go ahead and tighten up the split cone nut. Then you repeat the process. And then you fit the upper chamber. Check valve. On the discharge piece, you want to take these right here, line those up, put the bottom piece down there where the holes are for the straps. And then we have a, a tapered area on our 17 millimeter wrench. And then tighten. Make sure that you tighten from side to side, just like you would on a tire. Putting on your tire on the car. And it's important that this is done in three steps to make even tightening of the straps so that you don't get your pump bent at an angle. Then you take a torque wrench to do the first step in tightening. Again, make sure that you're doing it evenly to both sides. pump is completely built and we can take it loose. At this point we're going to want to check our in play which is the travel in and out of the coupling. And to do this you need to have a depth veneer. When you're checking this measurement you want to make sure that the shaft is all the way down so reach in, firmly grasp the shaft and then put your tool in make sure that it doesn't rock and then go into the coupling hole all the way in to the bottom of the shaft and then check your measurement. In this case this one is 36.6 which is good. Then push the shaft all the way up and then take the measurement again for the up measurement. Again make sure you're in the hole of the coupling. Make sure you're tool it's flat and then push it all the way in and this has to be above 39 and here we are 39.3 so that's good and then you'll want to mount the pump to your motor make sure that the spline is turned so that everything engages properly and make sure that you don't damage the leads while you're putting the pump this top and onto the motor. Then you'll attach your four screws to the four nuts. And just like before, it's important that you tighten these down diagonally, just like you would again if you were putting on or changing your tire on your car. And they have to be tightened to the correct torque as well.
Then you'll want to lay the pump down, stretch your leads out, lock this in place, and then make sure that when you're putting your cable guard in place that you don't cut your leads. This may require pinching your tabs. Sometimes you'll have to use a screwdriver under the strap to give enough space for the tab to slide under. Take your boot, place it over the cable. This was better the first time. Stretch out the cable, make sure it's not pinched. Screwdriver in underneath the other strap. Again, you want to make sure that you've got the cable pulled firmly so that you don't cut the lead. And we want to make sure that the cable guard goes underneath this area here. And to do that, make sure again that the cable is underneath the cable guard. You may have to hit on this just to give it enough of a bend so that this will go under smoothly. And tap it in place. If this is damaged uh, when you get it or if you have it damaged and have to repair, then it's simple to remove the seal ring and the bearing. The bearing, simply you pull back and pull up to remove the bearing. And to remove the seal ring, you push it in, in and underneath, and then pry it up. To reinstall, you'd always get a brand new bearing and a brand new seal ring. Make sure that the groove on the 85S, that the longer portion is facing downward into the chamber and you simply bend the bearing in place and then release. Make sure that it's properly seated in place and then you can install the new seal ring and it says this side up so that area is facing upward on the new seal ring. You put this in place and then you can gently tap it into the chamber.